Okay, I'd like to show you some types of factoring from page 185 and 186 in the textbook. Let's adjust the screen here a little bit. There we go. Now, the first type of factor, I'm going to work on three types. Uh, greatest common factor, special products, and grouping. First thing we'll go over is greatest common factor. Here's an example. What you want to do is look at this problem and think about what numbers divide into both 24 and 40. 2 goes into 24 and 40. 4 goes into 24 and 40. 8 goes into 24 and 40. What you want to do is use the largest possible factor, greatest common factor. You also need to look at the variables. There's x's and y's in both terms. What is the most, the largest number of x's I can take out of both terms? If you take three x's here, but can I take three x's here? No. So I can't use x to the third. I can take two x's here and two x's here. That works. What about y's? Can I take two y's here? No. How about one? There we go. And another y here. So, greatest common factor, 8 x squared y. What is left goes inside the grouping symbol, and then I have a factored problem. So, 8 into 24, 3. If I take two x's from the x to the third, there's an x. If I take a y from the y, nothing. Minus sign. 8 goes into 40, 5 times. I take both x's, and I take the y. Oh. There's the answer, factored, greatest common factor. Now, if you multiply this and this, you get back to the original. And that's a good way to check. Check. 8 times 3, 24, x to the third y. Remember, add exponents when you're multiplying, minus 40 x to the second y. Checks. So, we're good. Greatest common factor. All right, I've got two more examples for greatest common factor. In this problem, you'll notice the polynomial has one, two, three parts. It has three terms. It's a polynomial. Look for a common factor, a number that divides into two, four, and eight. Could I use the number 4? Four? 4 goes into 4. 4 goes into 8. 4 does not go into 2 evenly. So 4 is too large. I need a smaller number. Let's use 2. All right. What about variables? I have x to the 4th, x to the 3rd, x squared. I have to use the variable that goes into all three of those. So I have to use x squared. All right. Now, let's factor that out. 2 into 2 is 1. I don't need to write the 1. x squared, I can take 2x squareds from there, 2 x's from there, so that leaves x squared. Minus sign. 2 goes into 4, 2. Take 2 of the x squareds out, 2 of the x's out of there, I get an x. Plus sign. 2 goes into 8, 4. Two x's, take the two x's, and there is the answer. Again, I can check by multiplying. Two x to the fourth minus four x to the third plus eight x squared. Check. All right, one more using greatest common factor. 10ab to the third minus 15a squared b squared. That is a polynomial with two parts or a binomial. What number can go into both 10 and 15? Number one. Anything else? Two? Nope. Three? Nope. How about five? Five. In terms of letters, this is an A, this is A squared. The most I could take, I have to take the same for both, is an A. They both have a B. The most I can take, I have to take the same amount from both, would be B squared. And what's left? 
Five goes into ten. Two. Take the A, take two of the Bs, and left with the B. Minus sign. Five goes into fifteen. Three. Take an A, use an A. Take both Bs, and that's the answer. How can I check? Multiply. Ten. A, B to the third. Minus. Fifteen. A squared, B squared. Check. That's factoring using the greatest common factor.